Hi, welcome. Today we're going to make this chestnut backed chickadee. Isn't he a cute little guy? We're gonna work on him from start to finish, from the very beginning in creating the collage and fabric to making a rough plan about how we're going to stitch and things like choosing floss and even when it's important to me to get into small details like we do with the little beak of this guy. And then adding the border, making decisions about that, and also deciding late in the game to add things, which I do a couple of times throughout this. And I also add in some pictures of chickadees that I'm working from that I've taken at our feeder. And it's just a really fun process. So thank you so much for joining me. Let's get started. In the description box, there's going to be links to the chapters if you want to hop around and um, look at certain aspects or come back. Or um, This is quite a long video. It's about an hour long. So I'm hoping that the chapters will help you find what you're looking for. So I've started a new collage today and it's inspired by the chestnut backed chickadee, which I have in my feeders all the time. The black cap chickadee is more common. The chestnut backed chickadee is a lot like the black cap chickadee, except for it has this chestnut color, which is just so cute. I started by cutting out the shape of sort of a fat bird like the chickadees are, kind of with a big puffy chest. And then I added black and white and some gray. So I've pulled out some colors that I thought would work well with this chestnut color. Well, here's a little piece of it here and I just went around and I pulled some fabrics that I thought might go. And I had this piece of this really vibrant, cheerful orange that I thought maybe would be nice to be behind. Look at that, that looks nice. So I think I'm gonna I think I'm going to use some of this color and I also thought that this blue would look nice against that color and this color. So what I was thinking when I just got it started was maybe a little bit of green and then this turquoise color could come next. And then with this orange, maybe one piece could be in front, one piece could be behind. So there's a start. And this, I haven't stitched any of this, so it's just kind of in pieces here. But putting this here will help me audition this. So I'm going to continue to build this collage, bringing in colors. I think might look good. I think at this point I am going to leave this little guy here. That's going to help me think about colors. I like where it's going so far. I pulled this color, but I think it's it's a little too dark doesn't go so this one's out this is a slightly different shade than this green it's got more yellow in it that may be nice in there I had another shade of orange oh I like that and then just for brightness I also have this blue I also have some printed fabrics, not just solids, that I thought might be fun to integrate. This color is similar to what I'm going to be going for in the wing. So that's a possibility. This piece of silk had some colors that might go. So there's lots of options here and one person might pick something completely different than me. That's one way that you, over time, sort of develop your own style. And I like bright colors so much that I tend to pick 
really contrasting and bold colors. I think I'm gonna settle on this as my collage. I thought that maybe I was gonna bring this piece in. Might look nice at the top there. So I'm just choosing colors before I start basting. And I'm doing pretty pretty well finding what I want. And I'm having a hard time finding an exact match for this chestnut color. So it just shows you that you always need more floss. <laughs> These two are both pretty close. What I might do is a strand of each and see what that looks like. I don't have the biggest collection of floss in the world, but I have a pretty good one that I've collected over about 10 years. So here is one tray. And here's my other tray. So I have a pretty good collection. But I don't have an exact match, but that's okay. I'll figure it out. So now I'm gonna baste all my pieces down. I'm gonna start in the middle with the bird and I'm gonna work around the bird. And then I'm going to move around to the other pieces and I'm gonna switch floss so that the floss matches and it's not distracting for me as I go around. So I'm just getting everything tacked down so then I can move along and do stitching. So I've just added my first few stitches along the edges where the different colors meet. And I wanted to talk about best practices in terms of stitching, even though I believe there are no rules. So. The way I'm going to tackle this is I'm going to do some stitching around the bird and on the bird and I'm going to go back and forth between working on the bird and working in the background. And the reason that I do that is because then the stitches are being distributed evenly as I work and it prevents a puckering that I don't want. And like I said, there's no rules and I, I even break that best practice rule like I did in this previous piece of the Red Wing Blackbird. I had my collage made and I had done all of my basting and the bird was basted on as well. And what I decided I wanted to do was to begin to make this wing on the Red Wing Blackbird. It's kind of an exaggerated wing. If you have Red Wing Blackbirds where you live and you see them, um, the red, the orange, the yellow is not quite this big and I don't try to do photorealistic at all. I, I like to do my birds kind of in a whimsical way. And in this particular piece, what I was thinking about was the red wing blackbirds colors and I wanted to have those colors down and that would help inform what I would do with my stitching everywhere else. So I began by doing this heavy stitching on the bird. And what that did is it did cause some distortion and puckering where the sides started to pull in. And you can even see there's still some of it that exists. If I pull on it and stretch it, it starts to come back into shape. And um, as I showed in a previous video, I ended up adding extra felt on the back. And that was partly because of the puckering that happened with this initial stitching that I had done. And, and so a best practice is to work evenly around the piece as you go. And if you don't, like I didn't in this case, um, there's, there's workarounds and it still works out and it still turns out quite well. And so here's another example with this little spotted toey where I did actually work. I did some stitching on the bird, stitching in the background and I moved back and forth as I worked. And you can see there, there's less distortion. I'm not sure how much you can see on camera, but this, even though there's heavy stitching, which itself does cause some rippling and, and distortion, it's not pulling into the center as much as this piece does. This is a very even stitching. You can see on the back, it's fairly evenly distributed. It's easier to see on this because of the white and this is black, but even still, there is black stitching all in here that's pulling everything 
in. And on this one, it's very even. And as it worked, the fabric was able to sort of pull gently all at once. And if that's something that's important to you, it's just something to be aware of. And so in this piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, because I have put my colors down with fabric, instead of starting like I did here with a, a black bird that had, didn't have the colors on it, I already sort of have my color story happening. And so I'm going to be able to work back and forth as I build on this and add stitches and perhaps even add more fabric as I go. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Well, that's just a little tip. So I haven't stitched in green yet, so I'm gonna add that. And this color, this is avocado green light, is close to this one here. And this is actually a different piece of fabric than this that has more yellow in it. And so I pulled out the color number beside this one, avocado green, very light, which looks like it would be a nice match up here. So I'm gonna start down here and my idea at the moment is to continue what I've been doing here and just do some blending stitches. I've done a little bit of that here with the two colors and here. And so I'm just gonna do a little bit of that here. Now I'm gonna move up here. I'm using the lighter green color and I'm gonna do the same thing. This is about adding texture. It's about adding marks, all these lines. And I'm still not sure at this point where I'm going with this in terms of like a, a plan for how I'm gonna stitch, what kind of stitches I'm gonna do, what marks I wanna make. It's just my initial idea that I had about these bold blocks of color on this piece that I decided to go with. I didn't end up using a patterned piece of fabric. And so I had this idea of these kind of scratchy marks right at the edges of all these blocks of color. So instead of being really crisp edges, it's gonna end up being this little bit of an uneven look here. And I like how this green looks against this sort of rusty brown, orangey color, and how it's looking against this really bright yellow. And in terms of the length of my stitches, the direction of my stitches, I'm, I'm making them in the same direction roughly, but I'm not worrying too much about perfection here. I'm trying to cross over both colors with my stitches, so I have some on each side. And I am trying to stagger the colors a little bit. I felt that knot. There it is, it just knotted on itself, it came right out. And so, if you can see here, the color that sort of matches, there's a little bit more of it on the one side than the other. That's about the only purposeful thing I'm doing with these stitches. I really just want to put them down, make sure they're not perfect and even, make them look sort of more organic. This is, this color I'm working on here, this green with this yellow, 
It's quite a contrast. It's nice. When I when I did this bottom piece, I worked across from here to here. Then I turned and went back and did a second round because I felt like that needed that. I'm not sure if I want to do that here. I think I'm not going to at this time because I can always come back and add more later. I think now I'm just going to take a look at it. And it might be a good time to leave this portion and do a little bit of stitching on the bird. Get this little guy secured down a little bit better. This is starting to pull up a little bit here. I'm not worried about it though. Once it's stitched, it's gonna go flat. This is because it's such a thin piece. Everything else is still looking good. There's not too much distortion happening. So that'll be my next step is working on this little guy. So I'm gonna have some fun with color. The chestnut back chickadee, the color of the chestnut is almost exactly the color of this fabric, which was why I was so excited when I pulled this piece out. I have uh, some good photos that I took um, at our tray feeder that I'm gonna add and put up so you can see that that chestnut color is just so beautiful that I wanted to try and match it in this piece. And so what I did is I found two that are quite close. You know, I could have had, I could have thought of an orange, but that's too orange. So these two, this one is too brown. This one's not dark enough and doesn't really have enough orange in it. So what I'm gonna do is try a strand of each, which I've put in here. There's one strand and I've combined them. Usually when I stitch, I stitch with two strands. So I've put one of each and depending on the angle, it looks pretty good, it might be fun. I'm gonna try this and I may lend in a third color too. So here we go with our first color blend. It's actually not bad because it doesn't match the color of the fabric completely. The fabric and the floss colors are kind of working together, which I like. So in this case, I think what I would do is I don't need to stitch heavily because I want a lot of this fabric to show through. And so the stitching here, this is what I'm thinking anyways, the stitching is just going to be hinting at feathers. So whereas in this piece here, I started with black fabric. And so I've stitched black over top, but not heavily. And then there's some black showing through when I've stitched in a couple of different rusty colors here for the toey. And that's actually what the toey looks like. So that worked really well. And you know, this is not as heavy stitching as this, which is quite heavy. So what I may do is a lighter stitching on this one in terms of density, maybe similar to what I did when I made the starling, which I will show you. So here's the starling and it has lighter stitching. You can see all the stitches really well. And again, cause I'm not trying to be completely realistic. I'm just trying to hint at some of the things that I see in the bird in terms of color. If you've seen a starling, they, depending on the light, they 
they have so many different colors on them so I've actually got a a gray here and then a lighter brown this is a brownie gray and then I've added there's a tiny bit of blue a turquoisey blue and there's a couple of shades of purple in here and because they're against a black background they're really showing up there's kind of a I would call this probably a medium density stitching so that may be what's gonna work really well here and what I may end up doing I'm, I'm gonna stitch with this blended colors here and I may do solid of some of these and I may even bring in another color maybe blended that might be nice too So for now, I'm just going to stitch with this first combination of blended colors. And I'm keeping in mind my idea that I've come up with about adding multiple colors. So I'm not going to put the stitches too, too close together. And because I may use this darker brown around the edges of the bird. And I'm not going to go too, too close to the edge with this stitching. I'm going to leave myself some room for later. And here I go, just I'm going to move along the belly of the bird. Almost got a knot there. Uh, this one really wants to knot, probably because it's two different strands that have been put together. It's not quite as cohesive. And what I probably should do is get some of my thread magic. There, I got it apart. Wasn't sure for a minute there. Thought I might have to cut it off. Now, I just want to uh, pull it all the way through. I'm going to stop and get my thread magic. And then I kind of did that. A little heavily so I'm going to run my hand across the thread and make sure there aren't any clumps and hopefully that will help distribute the wax on the thread and it won't tangle so I'm going to move back up In this direction towards where I started so I can kind of build up an area in this color so I can feel now when I'm pulling the stitches through I can feel that there's that wax on the thread it's going through much smoother I should have done that from the beginning Okay, that's looking good. So I'm thinking that this color looks light. And so I don't want to stitch too far under here because I'm thinking about the other colors that I might want to use and how 
I might want this area to be a little lighter, this area to be a little darker. All while showing the fabric through. And what I'm going to do with this, with the, the black and the white, is I'm going to stitch over the fabric like I've done here. I'm going to imitate that with the black and the white. I'm not sure at this point if I want to also do it with this color. So I'm staying away from it at this moment until I've added the black and the white. So I think that's what I'm going to do next on the bird is add some of the black and white in its head. But this color blending has been a pretty good little experiment. I'm happy with it. Well, I think I'm just gonna go down to the bottom right here and I'm gonna stop for now with that and then do some black and white here. Not too much, just a bit, and then I will leave the bird and move on to other areas. Okay, I'm starting to stitch this white part. And my intention is to have stitches go over into the chestnut colored fabric. And so first I'm putting down a few stitches along the edge, working my way along here. And now I'm gonna go back in the other direction and get these stitches to overlap both sides, both pieces of fabric. If I was working on fur for an animal and not a bird, it would actually be a similar tactic I would use. It was a cat or a dog. And there was places where the colors changed from one shade to another, I would do the same thing. Try and look at the direction that the fur is going in and just make your stitches go in that direction. And in this case, it's feathers. So I'm, I'm trying to go in the direction that the feathers go and the way that they go is kind of down the bird and also kind of in this direction too as it as their back their head turns into their back and random and uneven is actually better both for fur and feathers I think it makes it look more natural so there's a start with that effect I'm going for I think it probably needs more but my thread's getting short here, and I don't want to start over stitching before I've done more stitching in other parts. So I'm just going to use up the rest of my thread here and try to move up and tack the rest of this piece down as much as I can with the thread that I have left. Okay, now black. I think I'm gonna take a few stitches down here. So one thing I was noticing when I was stitching up here was I had to contend with this piece of the black that was kind of flopping around. Okay, so I want to leave the beak area kind of alone right now because it's kind of, it's kind of a gray color. So I want to leave myself the 
space to do that. But I'm gonna just go around, go around the head here a bit and tack it down. I think I'm gonna do a tiny bit of stitching into the white, just a little bit. Okay, so now that this white piece is, is secured down except for this area here, you still see I, I have the brown underneath there too. I think I want to draw the eye on now, so I'm just using a pen, a gel pen, a white gel pen. And um, these are good for marking. They when you when you're on a, a darker fabric it shows up it kind of sinks in and so it's never quite as bright as when you first put it on now which is gonna be about right there and now the eye kind of it's actually a, a dark eye, it's not a light eye, but the bottom of the eye sort of touches this white and white kind of doesn't go into the beak quite as far as this piece is going. So I'm probably going to snip, snip this down a little bit carefully with, with these scissors, but he's looking very cute. The other thing is that the chickadee's beak is actually kind of small, smaller than in this little cutout that I've made. It's skinnier and pointier. So what it actually does is it comes down here and it kind of kind of looks more like this. So this piece here isn't really necessary. I'm just I think I'm gonna snip out some his beak's not quite this big either so I'm gonna snip this part out. And then after I do that, that's going to inform where I snip here. Okay, so small difference, but I'm much happier with it. Looks more like a chickadee to me. So there's some areas where I think when you're creating, you really want to get into a small detail and you really want to make it right. And in this case, that's what I wanted to do. Now there's some little black fibers that have gotten onto this. So I'm just going to take those off. So one way to take off little fibers like that, of course, is a lint brush, which would work well, or a little piece of tape or a small area works well too. Well, that's taken off quite a bit. There. This little guy's coming along. He's going to be pretty in the end. So I've trimmed a bit of the fabric off here and here to make his little face look more like a chickadee. And there's one last thing I want to do before I leave it and move on to other stitching. And that is to just add some white at the top along the top and the and this tip here to secure in place what I've just cut the edges are kind of fraying which actually looks good kind of looks feathery but I just want to tack it down and And then go over top and beside some of this little, this black stitching. I think I'm going to leave the bird now and move on to some other stitching. So I'm ready to start adding stitch around the bird and something's happened. An idea has occurred to me. 
Well, actually it was someone else's idea. I have an art advisor and she is a toddler. She's my granddaughter. And she was here looking at my table and the stitching that I'm doing. And she likes to touch all the threads. She likes to try on my thimbles. And she likes to grab all the little bits and pieces. And one thing she grabbed was my needle puller. She really likes it. It's something she usually grabs first and I don't use it that often. But what do you think she did when she saw it? She put it right here and then she looked up at me and it's a moon, which is one of the words that she's learned and she loves the moon. Well, what a great idea, I thought. So I grabbed this fabric that I'd originally been thinking about adding to this collage because I think these colors look really nice together and I thought maybe I could make a moon from this color. So I cut one out and I think that looks nice. And then I thought, hmm, what if I had it in a different color? I thought about the white, since there's white here on the chickadee. So I cut one out in white. Uh, that looks really good too. Then I thought about it and I thought, what about this blue that only appears in one spot? It does go all the way across. It's a big piece, but I've got green and green, even though this isn't the same piece of fabric. And uh, this color repeats. What about this? That looks really good too. I think they all look good. And I think what I'm going to go with is this. So now this piece has a moon. So I've stitched one round in white and I'm doing a second round in a color that matches this kind of tealy blue pale color that matches the color of the moon. I may also go around in the lighter avocado color that matches this color. Let's see what it looks like when I get all the way around. Yeah, I think I am going to add this same greeny yellow color around here and do one more round. This is the pale green. I'm going to try not to come as far into the blue when I stitch and I'm going to let myself go farther out into the green. See how that looks. So the fabric here, because I'm doing heavy stitching, is starting to pull in towards itself. So one of the things that I'm doing as I go around is just pulling it back out flat. It's still going to do that to a certain extent. Okay, so I've gone around now with this green and I'm just smoothing out places where it may be puckering and pulling. There's the moon. Now I'm going to do some stitching in this darker green. I'm going to try and extend this idea of these lines that are kind of uneven. going to pull that up a little further. I'm going to do it lighter than this part below it. The part below it, think of it in some ways as a joining of the two colors patchwork joining, amending. 
And then what I'm doing right now is continuing the idea, mimicking the mending. It's kind of an echo. So it's, it's not as heavy, not as thick. And because this green contrasts with the blue, each little line shows up. It's not a high contrast. It's not like an opposite color, like an orange. Or if I brought down this color and put it in here, it would really, really pop. Whereas this green is in the same family. So it's more subtle. I'm not terribly worried about where I'm placing these stitches, but I am aware of not wanting to make a straight line or parallel stitches. So I'm trying to stagger them somewhat where I start and stop the stitch. So it's more of an up and down. The lines are more of an up and down kind of appearance. So now I wanna work up here and I have lines going up and down in this direction and up here I have them and down here going in the other direction. And then I have circular lines and then there's curved lines on the bird. So what I'm thinking about is doing lines in this direction like this here. Um, and I wanna do some of that across the top. So I've added the lines of stitching along the top and I'm liking the way that looks. And now I'm gonna come in with some gray that's a little darker and do a little bit of stitching on the wing. So I added a few lines of stitching on the wing and now I'm going to add a little bit of the same gray on the beak. So now our chickadee has a beak and an eye and a wing. There's still more to do on the body, but at the moment, it's a good time to hop back and do some more stitching around the bird. So I've added some small circular shapes along the bottom. I thought that would be nice. It adds color. The color it's the same color fabric from here. And so it brings that color in. And then also there's a circular shape here. And these are circular shapes, oval shapes. So I think that's a nice um, addition. And they're very, very tiny. And I've just placed them on. So what I'm going to do is try not to knock any of them off while I stitch them in place. These pieces of fabric are so small that coming up from underneath and piercing them is going to move them too much. So I'm coming up right beside them. The other thing that happens when you're working with tiny pieces, and I find this happens sometimes if I'm, instead of making birds legs just from embroidery floss, if I'm using fabric, that the legs will fray as I'm stitching them and sometimes come apart and disappear. And then all that's left is the stitching. So in this piece, I haven't, there's no legs on this bird, and I'm going to add them just with embroidery floss. So there's going to be tiny little legs, and it would be too hard to cut that really thin fabric and place it down and stitch over it. It would just come apart. I'm just stitching enough on here to secure them. So 
So here I'm coming up beside where I want to stitch and so that I can go down into this piece. And that's much, much easier than trying to come up from underneath. So now I'm going to add some more stitching up here and I'd stitched in this blue color across here to make a band of stitching and I hadn't really decided what color I wanted to put in here. I was thinking I might want to use a different color but I think I like this color. I'm going to try adding some these same lines across here and into here. I think I might do them a little more spaced out than here, so less stitching, and that'll still give me the option to add in an additional color if I want to. So I'm gonna start at the top and move towards the bottom. So I've added this blue color and brought it all the way down into this yellow. And looking at it, I think I am going to add more stitching in a different color. But first I'm going to come down here into this blue area and I have this lighter color that I had used just a little bit around this moon shape. So it's not this darker color, it's just very slightly different color, a little bit lighter, and I'm going to bring some of that into the blue. I don't have a plan about where I'm going to place all of this color, except that I want to bring it up. And because I have these straight lines, I'm starting with straight lines up and down for my first pass across. I'm letting them be a little angled and I'm aware that in this area I'm stitching in now, I'm going to be adding some little bird feet. So I'm not going to do too, too much here. Now I have this golden yellow color, which matches this, and I'm going to come back in and I'm gonna stitch in this area. So I added the golden yellow color across here, and then I stopped about halfway down this section, and I hopped down here, and I added some of that same color in this green area. Now I'm gonna come in with a slightly darker shade of this blue, it's called sea green. So this is what I've been using, sea green light, and I'm adding a slightly darker shade of sea green. And I'm gonna start by adding some in this blue area, and I'm also gonna add some on top. So I've spent quite a bit of time adding this blue color. It's around the moon, it's here. And now I'm going to hop back and work some more on the bird. I'm going to add some white here and I'm gonna add some more feather detail. I've added some white here on the chickadee and I started in with some of the chestnut color and now I'm going to work on the gray wing. And what I've done is I've taken one strand of this darker gray and one strand of a lighter gray and I'm gonna add some detail to the wing. So I've done quite a bit of stitching. I've added feather details and I've added some more stitching in this yellow area and I've added some stitching here. The only place that doesn't have some stitching is here. So I'm going to have to decide what to do with that. And right now what I'm thinking about is the background. 
and I can do more rounds of blanket stitch in black. I could do it in more of this dark teal color. I could even do this chestnut color. Another idea that I had is yarn. If I couched yarn around this piece, I wonder what it would look like. So, if I take the yarn around, see, that might look good. It's a little bit hard to see on this black background. So, I've got a piece of paper here. And I'm going to see what it looks like with the paper. See, I think that might be nice. And I could, of course, just go around with black thread and do a really close round of blanket stitch. But I just thought that this might be nice this is a little bit thicker it might be a really nice way to have a nice border for this piece and the reason that i'm thinking of doing it now is because i'm at a place where i've done the majority of my stitching there might just be a little more to do and putting the border on will help me see it um, in a more finished way and i'll be able to know if there's more stitching that i want to do so I think I'm going to couch this. So here it is with the black yarn couched around the edges. And I think it really sets everything off. So now I just have to think about what I want to do with the moon and if there's any other stitching that I think would add and this piece is almost finished. So I wanted to talk about what I did in the body of the bird. I've just now added a little bit of stitching on the bottom and I used this color. These are the two colors I combined when I started stitching on the bird. So I used the one that's more brown to make a little bit of ground underneath to just ground the bird a little bit. And this color on its own, I had used for some additional stitching in here. So the chestnut area of the bird is a combination of this one color solid and these two in combination. And then I've added a little bit of gray along the bottom. So I'm calling this bird done, I think at this point. And now it's just some finishing details. A moon. So it's a pretty late stage in the game to be making a bold move I'm about to make, which is adding another color. So this is the darker of the avocado green. Here's the lighter that's in this piece. And I feel like it needs um, a bolder, darker mark. I could pick black, but I do have this other color, which is a darkest avocado green. And it almost looks like a black, but it actually is a very, very dark green. So what I'm going to do with this color is I'm just going to move around the piece and do some mark making to add some little accents. Because to me, the piece right now, the colors are, are looking really blended. I'm really happy with the way they look, but I feel like if they could be accented with a darker color, it might really add something. I could use this darker brown that I'd use down here or a black, but I'm choosing to um, make some marks with this darker green. So I've added that dark avocado green on the bottom here, and I'm liking the way it looks. And then I decided to add some light up here. So I used white and added some French knots. And I'm liking the way that they look. And I'm just looking at the piece now and deciding if there's anything else that it needs before I can call it finished. But at this point, I'm very happy with where I'm at. So the only other thing I've added is more French knots all the way to the top. And now this is done. So here it is. We're done. 
I'm going to add close-ups as I talk so you can see the stitching in detail and see that really these are all just simple stitches that I've done, mostly straight stitches. There's some blanket stitch and some French knots and that's it. I had a rough stitching plan that basically was that I was going to work back and forth and I did that and there hasn't been much distortion at all in this piece because of that. The stitching is fairly even throughout. So I'm happy with that. And really, the process was one where I was just noticing in the moment what it needed. And I left myself the space to make changes or to add, like I added this darker color. I added the French knots. Those were things that came at the end that were sort of unexpected. And overall, this process has just been enjoyable and relaxing. And I'm really happy with the result as well as the process. I know there's some people who are stitching along and I think that's amazing. And what I would say to you is just enjoy the process. This is slow stitching. And so relax, remember to breathe, and just have a great time. Thank you so much for joining me.